I got blown up by a Crassus the other day. My head was spinning, and I made some mistakes with my weapon builds. That's why I mixed this video together, cooked it to perfection, and something shitted out. That aside, the comments you guys left were a major contributing factor to this video. Thank you for all the feedback and the amazing info I can now put to life. As you've seen in part 1, the engineer can be a god. There's even more weapon builds I got for you and some mistakes resolved for the ones I featured before. In this video I'll also go deeper into platforming and strategies. There is still so much to learn about the platform gun and it's many, many uses. Yeah, there we go. I even started recording with a true engineer veteran who has mastered the RJ250 compound. So that will be featured too. Let's see. Exactly. It's gonna be very hectic trying to defend this though. Oh, 100%. Oh god. Yeah, check right, it. Alright, right. here we go. Shit. So what? Yeah. Without further ado, starting off with the builds. Firstly, the hyper propellant overclock. I tested the hyper propellant overclock again because of comment. Apparently, armor breaking actually really sucks for this build and is utterly broken, so get rid of it, alright? It doesn't work. Take incendiary instead. Take my word for it. As for the primary, I definitely recommend a new shotgun setup I've been using. Using the magnetic pellet alignment overclock, this build is very accurate, mainly a weak point damager, which doesn't really matter since you'll be going for that anyways with the hyper propellant. Now, Let's look further into new builds and the context in which to use them. I talked a lot about spirals and bridges in the last video, but what if we combine them with new builds? Forging weapon overclock. Introducing the Swarm Stopper build. stable component being a shard with the volatile reactor overclock, this weapon is a special one. It turns the ground into hot magma that burns the bugs. The primary is a bit of a wild card for this one. I usually take either the shotgun with cycle overload, magnetic, or the EM refire SMG as seen in the last video. It depends on the mission and the same goes for the proxy or lure I use for it. I tested this build on Hazard 5 in pretty much every mission. It's best in missions where you sometimes have to hold your ground, and it's at its worst in industrial and elimination, given it's mostly just area damage. Just a side note, I'd like to show you guys a very useful trick, animation cancelling. You might have known about this already, you can reload faster by quickly pressing right mouse as soon as you see the number go full. However, you can also do this with the platform gun. Credit to Zazimamba for teaching me this. Thank you, man. This trick has made playing the engineer even more fun than it already was. You need to time it just right, but after a few missions, you'll be able to enjoy 36 rapid-fire platforms. There are many different ways to use this one, but I always stick to three strats. Cave choke points, platform choke points, or bunkers. The cave choke points are pretty simple. It's just ones that you find on the spot and you lure a swarm toward it and have a nice bug barbecue. The platform choke points are ones you need to make yourself. You can fill up the wall, or use bridges and spirals. The slowdown upgrade comes in real handy when using proxy grenades, making sure the bugs can't get further than its radius. And last but not least, it's great for bunkers, given its ability to scorch the earth below you. To be honest, it's so good that it makes Hazard 5 boring.
I was going to show you the seek arounds and feedback loop build, but I found that the feedback loop is better on its own. It's more so a good alternative to the volatile impact reactor, or just vanilla shard. And the seek arounds are decent for the dreadnought, but my god the fire rate and lock time are so freaking slow. What I really wanted to focus on is the Plascrete Catalyst and turret arc overclocks I was lucky enough to obtain. I wasn't able to get the breach cutter overclock you guys suggested, the spinning death. I've been grinding very hard for it, but no such luck. As for the Plascrete and turret arc, let's start with those. This build is an absolute wonder for lethal missions. It's incredibly strong if used correctly. It feeds very well into a platform spamming or bunkering playstyle. You basically just take all the middle ones on turret arc. I personally prefer rate of fire in the second row for hazard 5 missions because sometimes you just don't have enough time or space to set up the sentries, and that rate of fire comes in real handy if you run out of your plascrete. For the shard, you take ammo, area of effect, charge speed, fire damage, and electrical damage. In the last row, you could also take slowdown if you won't be using a primary that slows them down for the sentry. You need two of them, and charge speed. And as for the grenades, it all comes down to how you want to use this build. There are two strategies I found work well with this build. The first one is choke point rotation. You basically just find a nice open cave or network of tunnels and rotate around the turret arc. You can also make choke points with the repellent upgrade for the platform gun at the cost of less weaponized platforms. You basically just lure the swarm through the turret arc under which you have platforms and blow them up. In theory, you don't even really need choke points, just as long as you make sure you get a swarm together and slow them down enough so that you can use the catalyst, you'll dish out guaranteed carnage. Before I get to the second strat, there is one important thing to note. Apparently the Plascrete will destroy a lure when you blow up a platform near it, making it a one-time use. It's probably for the best because it would be just so overpowered if you could use the full extent of the lure. You can, however, make use of it quite well if you flick your shard away from the platform right before it explodes, although this is quite hard to time. The second strategy is bunkering down with this build. You can make your own bunker or tighten an existing choke point. The latter is preferred if there isn't a driller to use his C4s and make a big room behind the tunnel. You basically just make your turret arc at the entrance, making sure you can activate it easily, and put a few platforms in the tunnel and inside of the bunker. For this strat, take any grenade except for the SSG, as that won't save you from a hazard 5 swarm. I gotta say, the Plascrete might not be the absolute overclock, but for missions with a lot of enemies, it sure is very strong. I got it two days before I edited this bit, so... Even I struggle with it here and there. I'm sure there are many more setups out there for the engineer that are just as good, if not better. If you have any ideas for what I should showcase in the next video, please let me know. I just made a very primitive Discord server, and you guys can join it if you want discuss everything Deep Rock related, or just chat a bit. It'll be in the description down below. But remember, no leaf lovers allowed. Being paid for dipping him much into liquid morkite and cooking crack. That guy in mission control needs to shut <gasps> So, what if I like to dip my ball and cock in liquid morkite? You are swipe! I will insert a quark into him and give you radiation for your spawning. <laughs> yeah, right! <laughs> hey! Mission control, I'm gonna. Fuck you! Deep in the ass like an interplanetary donkey! Incoming! Oh, Stop it! Yeah. Now! What 
I really wanted to focus on one last time in this video is the RJ250 and the electric shard. I feel like the electric shard deserves a little more credit. I slightly tweaked the build. Instead of weak point, you now take area damage. It still shreds through bosses. And can now effectively delete entire swarms if adequately electrified. After having tested this adjusted build in my first Elite Deep Dive, I can say with confidence that it is the best all-mission engineer setup I've ever used. It isn't too easy to use because you really have to learn how to parkour and get swarms together, but once you figure that out, nothing can stop you. The RJ250 also deserves a tweak setup. I'm not entirely sure what the best build is, but Zazzy Mamba said that taking full ammo and incendiary goes very nicely with the electrochemical rounds lock one. So I, I want to say I want to get up there. Yeah. That. Oh, I made it for that. I toss it. You also said that you can jump better if you're not hosting. Oh yeah. The lag somehow oh, makes no. you go faster and makes jumping yeah. easier overall. <laughs> Lastly. The elemental resistance upgrade in the performance indicator reduces self damage from the incendiary, allowing you to jump far more often without hurting yourself. Anyways, I'm now a gold one engineer, and I think it's time to pick up the other classes. For these two videos, I've practically only played engineer just for you guys. Speaking of which, I just have to say it again all the awesome compliments and sharp critique has helped me tremendously. Without all of you beautiful dwarves, I wouldn't have the first clue what things I need to keep doing and what things I should steer clear from when making videos. It's very likely that I'll dive deeper into the other classes or return to the engineer if Deep Rock gets a massive update. I hope you'll learn something, good luck in the caves, and rock and stone! Oh no, there is, there is. 